We have high standards. We want to be able to have those players who are highly driven, highly competitive and self-motivated themselves, but also really good people on top of that. Scouting, main camps, you know, what they look for and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that, stick around. What's going on guys? This is Braden from Investment Hockey Advising here. And today we've got a special, special interview with you guys. We have USHL scout Spencer Lone on board. Now I know this is the answer to all your prayers because you've all been asking us, hey, when's the next USHL guy gonna come on? When are we gonna get USHL advice, how to get to the league and all that stuff? In this interview, we answer all of these questions and more by asking uh, Spencer some key questions regarding scouting, main camps, you know, what they look for and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that, stick around. Before we get into the interview though, as always, what would an AHA video be without me asking you to absolutely destroy that like button? And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. All right, without further ado here, let's dive right into the interview here with USHL scout Spencer Lone. All right, so we got Spencer Lone in the house here. Spencer, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, I think it'll be a great interview here. So why don't we start with you telling the, the guests a little bit about who you are, your hockey background, and uh, what you're doing now? Yeah, for sure. So currently right now, I am an area scout with the Chicago Steel. It's my third year doing it, so it's a lot of fun so far. And I also have my first year coaching this year with Team Illinois U16, their boys team. So it was a good experience there. We had some good players on our team. For me, it's funny because I, I never played hockey growing up. I never had a true hockey background, but I always had a passion for the game as a fan. I love the Blackhawks because when I was growing up here, they had their dynasty run from 2010, 2013, 2015. So it made it easy to root for a hockey team locally. So it was pretty fun. And I'm still a young guy. I'm 20 years old. So I'm still going through the process of college and all that stuff right now. But on the side, it's it's a really fun gig to have. Obviously, there's a lot of great people in, involved in not only with the steel, but all across the board in hockey. So it, it makes it a lot easier when you have very valuable people working alongside. And I couldn't be able to make it where I am right now without most of those people, if not all of those people. So very fortunate to obviously be in a good role in hockey and be able to be involved in that for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. That that was my next uh, thing that I was going to ask. Like you look really young, right? Twenty years old, and you landed a gig as a USHL scout. Yeah. So how how that even come about? How'd you get uh, that opportunity? Yeah. So. I started scouting on Twitter. Like Twitter was my main thing. All the Twitter scouts that you see everywhere. Yep. But I always loved watching YouTube videos on prospects at the time. So what I would do is I would just watch prospects on YouTube and then just post little highlight clips or stuff like that on Twitter. And over time, it led to an opportunity with a scouting service called Draft Prospects Hockey. And they've evolved into a really good scouting service for a lot of really good people there. And Dan Stewart's a really good director there. He he was the one that reached out to me and he was awesome about it. So, and then over time, I worked with Draft Pro for about six, seven months. And then I also was connected with the Steel GM at the time, Ryan Hardy, who's now at the Toronto Maple Leafs. I knew Hardy going back to October of 2019. So we had a connection there. And then over time, we would just text back and forth, do all that basic stuff to to keep in contact over time. I would sometimes give my opinion on players that they might want to draft. Not that they would take my opinion, but just to give them a little bit of insight at the time. So it led to an opportunity where he eventually reached out to me in summer of 2020, asking me if I wanted to join the staff as a scout with the Steel. So obviously I was really thrilled about that. And it's obviously led to more opportunities within hockey over time now, but it was it's a great opportunity to have someone like Hardy by your side and he's a great mentor for me, a great person to be alongside. And that was that was the main way I was able to get in because of him. So cool. All credit to him there. Yeah. Well I mean you had to do something right, right? Like even if yeah. you know the guy, if you didn't know what you're talking about or anything like that, he wouldn't bring you on as a as a scout. So the fact that he brought you on probably meant that some of the input that you gave in the past probably uh, had a lot of value for him. So you had to have done something right. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> 
For sure. As a scout, what does the the day to day look like? What are the leagues you go out to? Like, how how do you find the players? What's that day to day look like? A lot of our players really want to know, like, what's what's uh, the life of the scout? What do they look for? What was their day to day? You know. So maybe elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, for sure. So the life of a scout isn't all glitz and glamour all, all the time. Sometimes you're on the road a lot for the most part. And for me at this level, it's really nice because obviously I'm still young and I still really enjoy the game. So being able to have that enthusiasm about the game makes it easier to go on the road and travel and stuff like that. But for me personally, I do a lot of video work. So I cover the the high performance hockey league. So that's the the Chicago Mission, Oakland Junior Grizzlies, Honey Bates, Windy City Storm, all those all those teams. So and I've covered them the last few years now. My first year, I was covering Ohio, St. Louis, and the HPHL because most of the rinks were shut down because of COVID. So we were doing a lot of video work that year. I only got into about three games in person that year. So it was pretty crazy. The last few years, I've been covering the HPHL. So and a lot of the times it's it's spent on weekends and going out to games locally, Seven Bridges Ice Arena, Fifth Third Arena right by, right pretty close to my house. So it's it's nice to have a lot of different youth hockey levels and teams around here to be able to go to different rinks on a consistent basis and be able to have that opportunity to see players regularly, especially on a weekly or bi-weekly process, depending on when teams play and scheduling and all that stuff. So you, you mentioned that you watch guys on video, you have like certain teams and leagues that you look out for. Uh, I'm assuming, you know, for for your guys' organization, pretty much every other US uh, USHL organization, they got scouts pretty much everywhere, right? Scouts in Canada, scouts in different leagues in the US and everything. Is that, would you say that's true? Yeah, we have, with the Steel, we have one of the largest scouting staffs, I believe in the league. And we have around 10 guys or so, if not more, if I count correctly. So we have a lot of guys, like you said, based everywhere. There's guys, we have a couple guys in Western Canada. We had, we had some guys, we had one last year who's based in the West out in Colorado. We have, we have some in Ontario. We have some elsewhere as well. And we also have our head scout, Mike Fazio, who does a really good job with us too this year. So we have a lot of guys on our staff and yeah, it's pretty much the same for most staffs too. They like to get across the board. Typically it's a little bit more challenging with European guys because not as often you get those type of players out to the USHL. Once in a while, you might get some really good players from Europe out here, but it's challenging out there to find really good players and have them come over here. So a lot of our staff is based in North America. So the, the point I'm alluding to with this is that even though like, and you mentioned you watch guys on video, even though you think nobody's watching you, if you're playing in a somewhat good league in minor hockey, like AAA, prep program, whatever, if you're a good player, chances are USHL scout has probably seen you. Maybe not, but you guys have eyes like pretty much everywhere. So if you're good, if you're doing like you're playing decent league and you're putting up numbers and all that stuff or doing what you need to do. Um, my opinion is that somebody will find you if you're, if you're very good. Would you agree with that opinion? I would agree for sure. Always everybody's trying to find that guy who, you know, the top guys and most of the guys know the top guys, but how do you find those guys that are in that middle tier where there's little to no separation? That's the biggest challenge. And I feel like a lot of these scouts at this level, it's a lot more competitive to try and find those players because some of them are from non-traditional markets. Some of them are from teams that might not have the best players on their team, but there might be one guy on that team that stands out and they were just heavily underscouted. Yeah. So it depends on obviously the location and the the market factor for sure. But it's very interesting because you get you get a lot of different opinions on different players all the time. So sometimes it's it's challenging to keep up with which players is, is really good and which ones are the the real gems and stuff like that. But yeah, there's it's definitely a challenging process to try and make sure you're not only trying to find players that are right fit, but also the players that you want to find with, like I said, the little to no separation. Yep, hundred percent. Now, how how does the whole kind of process work? Let's say you see a really good player that's kind of like a hidden gem, and you think he's very good. Do you report to your head scout? Do they go to the the main camp? Like, how does that all work when it comes to the USHL? Yeah, so for the USHL, from time to time, there might be a camp invite on occasion. Usually, you'd report it to our head scout. So our, our head scout, Mike Fazio, I'd report some stuff to him just to let them know to keep an eye out for one of these guys. And it, it's not something where we necessarily pick them, but as long as 
he's able to pick up on that and I have that eye to figure out which players are still the right fit. I feel like that's a that's a really good thing to have. And obviously it really helps to helps the whole staff as a board to try and find better players from every which way. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely nice that way. For the main camp, like just just because I don't know if, if people understand really like USHL compared to all the other leagues. Cause you see like NA, NCDC, CCHL, like a bu- bunch of these leagues, like you can go to prospect camps, you can sign up online and stuff, but USHL is different. You can't just sign up to, to prospect camp or the main camp online. You have to be scouted. It's an invite only type thing. So how many players typically go to these camps for USHL and how does the, the process kind of work? Yeah. So for us with the steel, we typically have around, I would say 60 to 70 guys at our, our camp each year. So for the camp process, like you said, it's mainly invite only. So guys, from time to time, you'll get European invites who will come to camps just to see what the junior process is like and how it feels for them. It's also really good for players to try and understand what junior hockey at least briefly feels like so that way they have that experience with the speed and all the other factors that go into these camps. But the main camps, a lot of these players that we have are drafted already, and we just like to add a few other touches with some invites and stuff like that. But there's a lot of different factors that can go into trying to invite prospects. Like I would say one of the better ways to try and promote players is the USHL combines, which are coming up because it obviously adds for that a little bit more exposure and you're able to have a little bit of that camp like feel right before the USHL draft, which is really nice, especially with the amount of teams that are there. It's not just USHL teams, but you get a lot of NAHL teams and sometimes NCDC, sometimes even college scouts are out there watching these these combines because the USHL has such a good reputation with CAA and being able to develop prospects. There. So a lot of camps, it depends on obviously who who's drafted and then it depends on the, the players themselves and if they're the right fit for the organization as well. Yep. 100%. So kind of moving away from the whole structure and all that stuff, back to like when you go and you scout players, what are maybe the top skills that you look for in players that that make it like a player stand out for you? Yeah, for me, the biggest one is obviously you hear it a lot. It's hockey sense. Hockey sense, I, there's a lot of nuance that goes into hockey sense because it's not just understanding the situation, but it's a lot more that goes into understanding off puck play versus on puck play because I feel like those two are very separate in terms of how they're into period because you can get a player who's really smart without the puck they anticipate they're proactive they're able to read space very well but then when they get the puck they panic and it's like they don't really know what to do with it so i feel like a lot of hockey sense comes to understanding the situational flow of the game being able to adapt to those situations and being able to anticipate rather than read and react because read and reacting is good at lower levels but as you move up you have to look be a little bit more proactive and take a little bit more of a, a heightened stance and sense of the play because things are moving faster. Gaps are going to be closed quicker. Defensemen are bigger and know how to use their bodies better. I would say with off puck play, a lot of it, it, it comes down to puck support, being able to read the, the flow of the game that way, being able to close support in zone offensively, like around the net, being the bumper guy, that high F3 guy. So that way you can create options and passing lanes that way. So just being able to be a guy who can play between checks consistently and be able to have that sense component of the game off the puck. Usually when you have it without the puck, then it's easier to to translate that when they have the puck in their hand or in the puck. So hockey sense, obviously a big thing for me, but I feel like going back to those two off puck play and on puck play are very sad. Very, very important when it comes to hockey sense. Like, like you said, hockey sense is the big separator between okay, good players and like the great players. You know what I mean? A lot, some great players that I've played with, you know, they weren't great skaters. They weren't, they didn't have great hands, whatever. They, they were good at everything, but it's really their, their sense, their situational awareness uh, with the puck and without the puck, just the, the plays they made and where, like where they could position to, you know, to get a rebound and score a goal, you know, just little things like that. They just were able to anticipate things better than everybody else, which made them great. You know, I, I also like what you mentioned, not just read and react, but to anticipate, you know, I feel mm-hmm. like read and react, say, okay, something happens and then you try and react to it. Whereas anticipates like that other level where before something even happens, you're already like, it's like chess, you know, you're anticipating yep. one or two moves ahead of time. It's like, okay, if I get the puck 
this way, then I expect the player to be there. So I'm going to try and get like, make the pass there. So when you do get the puck, you already have an idea what you're going to do, you know? Yeah. I feel like if exactly. you can anticipate that way, it puts such a bigger advantage for you. Yeah. I really like that point that you mentioned because there's a lot of situations where it, it adds to that efficiency level of a player where you're able to anticipate you're already in the space. And then if it's, say, it's a defensive zone thing, you're able to intercept the pass a little bit sooner or you're able to read the passing lane a little bit quicker or close your gap. Because sometimes, especially at the NHL level, all it takes is a millisecond for a difference with little goals or stuff like that. It's crazy how things turn out. So you never really know. But anticipation is definitely a big trend in the game nowadays, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's it definitely is. And that, that millisecond really matters. Like it, it's, yes. it's so crazy how it's just a small fraction of time, but just that extra little anticipation could be the difference between you like missing like the let's just give an example let's say there's a d to d pass you're trying to intercept it for a breakaway it could be the difference between you anticipate just a millisecond more and intercepting it or missing it and then they go down the other way you know so yeah exactly in terms of like you know the the character stuff what what are things that that you look for in a player and what are some like more red flags that you see in terms of like character just just maybe talk about character overall and how that factors into your decision as a scout whether to, to yeah up to your head scout or not yeah naturally i think character is something you want in as many people as you can find so there's a lot of people that believe in body language and i do believe in body language too because of the fact that if players are not really engaged in the play they're not going to be want to want to be coach as a bull obviously be a good teammate being able to to light and positive i feel like is a huge factor and i've seen some players do that and it's it's really the little things that can help a team uprise like that so be active on the bench or be active on the ice with your communication or support or, or recovering for somebody when they made a mistake something something little but something that's going to add up with those little details over time a lot of characters more so the smaller things than anything else is what i've read hockey but life in general for the most part so there's it's huge for us here with the steel because we have high standards and we have just for the players we're trying to recruit in our process as well so we want to be able to have those players who are highly driven highly competitive and self-motivated themselves but also really good people on top of that yeah 100 percent. it's 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 so important to team succeeding you know if you have just even a couple of bad apples in the room it can really derail a whole team uh so it's it's really yeah the characters on point and um who who would you say is like just for fun the best example that you've seen on the steel uh, in terms of like a true leader a guy that that has great character on the team yeah i don't know a ton of the players personally but i know like brady arneson's a really good kid on there he's a he's an awesome player he's an awesome kid as well so being able to uh, there's a couple of guys macklin celebrini obviously is a really good player but he's also a really good person and I mean, everybody on the team really is a really good example of that. They're all coachable. They're all they're all really engaged. And Mike Garman and Noel and all our staff here, they do a tremendous job of being able to find the right guys and the right players for the style of hockey we want to play here and the culture we want to build here too. So they're fantastic with it. They're fantastic minds on top of that. So it's it's definitely nice to have a lot of very similar minds in that sense, but also very different in terms of how they play on the ice, which is really cool. Yeah. Now that I think of it, it's probably a bit of an unfair question because you guys have obviously a great track record, great organization. So naturally it'd probably be a lot of great character guys in there, not just one or two, right? So yeah, I know for sure. Everyone really. Yeah. hundred percent. So maybe to, to end things off here, like one more question I always ask everybody at the end is like, What's one more last piece of advice you'd li like to give to younger players out there? Yeah, I, I love this question. I, I would say discipline is a huge thing for me because I feel like there's talk about motivation and discipline, but I feel like discipline is something that you have to rely upon a little bit more. Like there's obviously some sacrifices you have to make in order to try to advance to the next level. Like me personally, I didn't play, so I don't have that experience from a playing perspective, but I have it for the of a different perspective, which is good. But I would say discipline for sure. And being able to not only act based on feelings, but based on vision and what you want to accomplish over time. Because if you really want to have that goal, that ambition towards trying to work up towards the next level, whatever that be, if it's college, if it's pro, like the AHL or 
ECHL even, or obviously the NHL for most people, then you have to have some discipline in various areas of your life in order to achieve that. Because a lot of these players, especially at the NHL level, are very disciplined with their life else. And some might not be, but most of them are because they, they work to get to that level. So discipline for me is, it's an important thing. And I, it's something I emulate myself do over time. So I, I would say being able to have that factor in not just life, but hockey in general is, is really with training and all those different methods that go into developing. Yeah, I agree with you so much. Discipline is huge because... Like you said, like discipline versus motivation, motivation, it's, it's like a temporary feeling that can get you going, but it's not long lasting mm-hmm. discipline. If you stay disciplined your, your whole life, it just becomes your lifestyle and it, it leads you towards the goals that you want to accomplish. It's a reliable thing that you can rely on versus motivation is more like temporary. So I think if like the most successful players that I see, not only in hockey, but in life, they're the most disciplined guys that, that get the stuff done, even when they don't feel like it. They still do it, and uh, that's how they accomplish all their goals and, and accolades and everything. So exactly for sure, and having passion for the game on top of that—that's a huge one. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, discipline with passion combined is a dangerous combination for sure. Very yes. Awesome. Well, Spencer, I won't hold you up any longer. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I think uh, a lot of the players watching this will get a lot of value from the things you said. Coming from a USHL scout, they'll know now what scouts look for, how the whole system kind of works and and all that stuff. So I think uh, it was a great interview and I'm happy you came on. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. All right, guys, that is a wrap for the interview here. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of it and a lot of key takeaways. I know I definitely did as well. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding as to how the USHL works, what scouts look for, how the main camps work and all that kind of stuff. And it gives you a better chance moving forward as to, you know, getting recruited by a USHL team one day. If you guys enjoy this type of video, if you haven't already consider absolutely destroying that like button, it really goes a long way for more people to see this here. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss an another video moving forward. Also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to ask us or Spencer, drop a comment down below. Or if you want to send us an email privately, you can send it to info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on that next one.